is on page 23, problems you want to see work off of the last assignment. I would appreciate it. I don't care if you got a question or not. Somebody ask a question from the first session on page 23 so that we can try all these. It'll help James out so that he makes sure that he understands what we're doing. Number seven. Problem number seven. They give us a picture that looks like this. Give me just a second to draw this picture. And they want us to find. Somebody help me out. What's this say? Give me a little more, one more word. Segment in Q, that part's correct. What do we know that we're finding? There you go. The length of segment in Q. How do you know that's a segment, not a line or a ray? Because you're finding the what? The measurement, the length. How are we going to find the length of this segment from N to Q. What are we going to do with those two? So we got one and one fourth inches plus one inch. What's that give us? Two and a fourth inches. Just add. Other questions on that first part? No other questions on it? Pretty easy. What's the other thing you could be doing instead of adding? Subtracting if you know the whole thing, right? Second part down there at the bottom of the page on 23. Find me one of those problems. 19. 19. What's the very first thing, after I write number 19 down, what's the first thing we're going to do to start to solve this problem? Draw. Now he said draw a line. Are we actually drawing a line? No. What are we drawing? Probably a segment. If you make it a line, that's fine. We don't really need the whole thing. Is that all I need to draw? What else do I need? Another point. Another point. Somewhere in there, who knows. Now they told us somewhere in the directions what the name of this point had to be. What did they say the name of this point here had to be? Why? Everybody agree why? How about these two points? On 19, so I don't have to keep trying to look back at the book. Did they tell us something about the distance from X to Y? Yes. What did they tell us? 3K minus 2. 3K minus 2. Everybody agree with Silas on that? Yes. 3K minus 2. Label it that way so that you got some, hopefully you write a little neater than I do because that's sort of hard to read. Did they tell us something about Y to Z? What was it? Plus four. And did they tell us something about X to Z? Four K plus thirty-eight. Test or quiz? We're taking a test or a quiz. You label, you draw all that, label it that way, you get a point. All right. So if we were taking a test or a quiz, you get a point for this. Label and all that. James, that make any sense? Nothing really hard about this. Second thing, set up your equation. You set up the equation correctly, you get another point. What are you going to do with these two segments? Add them together, put them together. Could you do the like terms as you're doing this? Would you guys rather do it that way? Make it a little shorter. So we'll do it that way. 
You got 3K and 7K. What's that give us? You got a negative 2 and a positive 4. What's that give you? So we added this plus this, and we know that that should all equal what? 4K plus 38. I'm going to solve this real quick because your algebra teachers last year did a magnificent job of teaching you how to solve equations. So this is all easy stuff, right? Subtract 4K on both sides. That's 6K. If I do something wrong, somebody please tell me. That's 38 left on that side. Subtract 2 on both sides. Those cancel out. That leaves me a 6K on this side. 36 on that side. Divide by 6 on both sides. And I think K ends up being 6. Did I do that correctly? Yes. Is that our answer? No, Find YZ. Is that what it said? Yeah. It asked us to find the variable, so we did half of it. So if this problem is on a test, one point here, one point for setting up the equation correctly, Another point for getting this, but this problem is probably going to be worth four points, so if you stopped right there, you'd get three out of the four. The fourth point is going to be finding YZ, the length of segment YZ. How am I going to find that length? Plug in what? Six. If I put in six right here, YZ is there. Seven times six plus four. I'm not going to grade calculators this time. I will grade them next time. Make sure you've got a calculator come Thursday. What's 7 times 6? Plus 4? Dylan, any of that sink in? Yeah. Easy stuff, right? You could just stay home every day and do just fine in here because it's such an easy class, right? Other questions on that section? 17. 17. tells us to do the same thing, doesn't it? Same setup. What was this again? Y? X and Z. Hurry up, let's go through this. What, what do they tell us about segment X, Y? 4N plus 3. What do they tell us about Y, Z? 2N minus 7. 2N minus 7. What do they tell us about X, Z? 20? Yep. What are you going to do with these two? Add them together. What's 4n and 2n give us? 6n, 3 and negative 7, minus 4. All of that should equal what? Again, point here for drawing this picture. Point for setting up the equation correctly. Another point for solving it correctly. Those cancel. If I do something wrong, somebody please tell me. Is that correct? Yes. And what's the other thing that they wanted us to do this time? Find YZ. That's right here. So I'm going to stick four in there. Can you drag your calculator? You can stick all that right into your calculator. What's 2 times 4? Minus 7. So how long is segment YZ? When stuff comes out like that, that's probably why Silas asked, because he got an answer like 1, he thought. I don't look guy, that shouldn't be 1. So the length of this segment is 1. How long is this segment? Nineteen, everybody agree with that? Yeah. Really? So 
from here to here is 19, and this from here clear over to there is 1. That doesn't make any sense. Has to be 20 total. But my 19 is a whole lot shorter than my 1 segment. I put it like that, right? Does it matter the way it's drawn? Don't go by that, because Eversol drew it. It's on your paper, you drew it. it. Just means you didn't draw it the way that they were thinking. Other questions? Other questions on, uh, any questions on the next page? Tell me something about that picture. What's congruent? Segment what? Segment NT. And remember, the congruent symbol looks like this. It's an equal sign with the tilde above it. Segment NT is congruent to segment what? TV. What's that tell us about those two segments if they're congruent? Same measurement, same length. All right, so if I told you that segment NT here was seven centimeters, what do we know about this length? Seven centimeters, so on, so on, so on. So congruent, make sure you know that symbol, make sure you know how to write it out. This says segment NT is congruent to segment TB. This says segment NT equals segment TB, geometry form, algebra form. Questions on that other page? Good. 30? 33. 33. Don't be afraid to ask. You see right there. As soon as somebody says, hey, could you do this one? There's probably about 10 other people need that same question or had questions on that same problem. Before I go any farther, what's that tell us about these three segments? They're all the same. They're all congruent. U, B, W, X. They tell us this one's 3x plus 1. This one's 4x. Ignore that. 4x minus 6. And this one's 2x plus 8. They're all the same. What am I going to have to do? Take the first two. Take the first two. Just because Zach likes the first two better than the others. Does it matter? What should you try to do? Make it as what? How about easy? Wouldn't you like to make it as easy as possible? Yeah, so if one of these has something stupid in it, these three are all pretty easy. If one of them has something dumb in it, like parentheses or something extra in it, probably leave it out. So if we take the first two, like Zach said, what do we know about these first two? They're congruent. What's that mean algebraically? They're equal. So 3x plus 1 should equal 4x minus 6. We're going to solve that. Subtract 3x on both sides. 1 equals x minus 6. Add 6. What's x end up being? Ignore that. x equals 7. I don't know what they ask us to find. So segment UX, we're trying to find the length of segment UX. Oh, that goes from here all the way down to there. How are we going to do that? Plug in 7. If 
I plug in 7 here, it's 3 times 7. 21 plus 1, 22. Seems like some of you maybe forgot your multiplication facts. Nobody's yelling out 21 there. Might it have been easier to plug in here? What's 2 times 7? 14. 14 plus 8. That makes it a little harder. Might have to take off your shoes to count all that up, right? You still ain't got enough, right? How many fingers and toes you got? 20, so you can come up short. Once we found this one, that's 22. Do we need to plug into all the others? What do we know about all three of them? They're all 22. So is 22 our answer? What do we do to get the whole thing? What do you come up with? 66. Whole thing with that problem, when you're setting up the equation, make it as easy as possible on yourself. When you're plugging back in, pick the one, pick the place where it's the easiest thing to plug in. Don't make it harder than it has to be. Other questions? 32. Do I need to draw this picture on 32? What do we know about those two segments? They're congruent. They're equal. So what equation can I set up? Does everybody agree with that? Ignore that stray mark going up through there. What are we going to do first? Distribute, right? 2x plus 7 stays the same. What's 4 times x? What's 4 times a negative 3? Now I'm going to solve this. You might do me a favor and step back here and turn on that fan that's sitting on top of that so-called air conditioning system. Add 12 on both sides. 2x equals, what's 7 plus 12? 19. Now what? Is that going to come out even? 9.5, 9.5. Is that wrong because it didn't come out even? Please make sure you know most things, a higher percentage of all things in the real world aren't going to come out all nice and even. So don't think you're wrong just because it doesn't come out all nice and even in here. Uh, what they ask us to find on 32? DE, so the second segment. So we take nine and a half. Does it matter which one of these we plug into? Which one do you want to plug into? This part or this part? One without parentheses, so 2 times 9.5 plus 7. Somebody help me out and tell me what all that is. It's 19. Everybody agree with 26? Okay. Other questions? Carpentry. Carpenter has a piece of wood that is 78 inches long. He wants to cut it so that one piece is five times as long as the other piece. What are the lengths of the two pieces? I got a son that's about your guys' age. All weekend long I spent in the barn trying to make him something stupid that I have no clue why he wants it. But he wants it, so I figured I'd make it for him. So we're out there cutting boards up and stuff, doing stupid stuff like this. Uh, again, partner has a piece of wood, 78 inches long. So what do I know about this whole thing? 78. 
He wants to cut it, so he's going to cut it. Maybe right there, I don't know. So that one piece is five times as long as the other piece. He's going to cut it right there. What do we know about this longer piece in relationship to that piece? It's five times. So do I just put five here? 5x. If I make that 5x, what's this part over here going to be? What am I going to do with these two parts? Add them together. So what? Tell me the equation. 6x equals 78. Somebody help me out with their calculator. Comes out to be 13. So what's 13? Length of this board is how long? 13 inches. How long is the other board? 65 inches. Everybody agree with all that? Anything like that ever going to come in useful? Yes. Other questions? Thirty-one. Sorry right, if I just do this. Number one, I dislike this problem. I hate math people who do stuff like this. This whole thing's 14.4 inches. What's wrong with that? When was the last time you grabbed a ruler or a tape measure and it said 14.4 on it? Never. It's got fractions on it, doesn't it? So why they do stupid stuff like this? All they had to do is make that centimeters or millimeters or meters or something else. Don't make it inches because inches don't have decimals. They got this split up into how many different segments? Four. What do we know about all four of those segments? They're all congruent. So how can I find each one? Take that number and divide it by four. How many fours are there in 14? This might be a reason to make sure you have a calculator next time. Everybody loves, loves long division so much. Three, that's 12. How many fours in? 24. So what's the length of this segment from here to there? 3.6. How about this one? 3.6. How about this one? This one? Uh, what they ask us to find? Q to T. Q to T. So that's from here to there. How many of those 3.6s do I need? If I could drive them correctly. Three of them. So what am I going to do to find that whole length? Add or multiply either one. Does that look right? 10.8 inches. Fill in every bit of that makes sense. You're such a genius. Next thing I want you to do, walk up here, you're going to grab those two sheets of paper up here, fill in what you need to fill in.
We're going to write down a whole bunch of stuff along with this. So distance, length between a uh, length of a segment between any two points. So if we're trying to find the distance from this point to that point, it's that length. That's what we're looking for. What's something you know about distance? That might be. I'm standing here. I start walking. How many paces did I walk? Three. Three. I'm standing here and I start walking. How many paces did I walk? Three. Distance is always positive. It's always got to be a positive number. Don't listen to those silly science teachers, because sometimes they'll tell you that it's a negative number. Don't tell your grandpa I said that. Don't be mad at me. No, I'm just kidding. He knows I think science people are silly. If I got a pendulum, the pendulum goes back and forth, right? Well, you start here. That's zero. This way it's going to be positive. Going the other way is negative. Sometimes you use negative distances in science to do different things. Everything that we're going to do in here is going to be a positive. So when we do this, when we do this, I'm going to show you the mathematical way in a second to do on a number line. But right now I'm going to show you an easier way. If I wanted you to find the distance from point N to point T, what would you do? So NT equals what? Five. Remember, this means the length of segment NT equals five. So what I want you to write down here with this, probably the easiest way, on a number line, just do what? Count. Just count. That's the easiest way. On a number line, just count. So if I put this problem on the next test, Taryn's doing the test and she just counts. And she writes down five. Am I going to know if she did the mathematical way or just count it? I'm not going to have a clue. Doesn't make any difference. Do something as easy as you possibly can. So if you're on a number line, you're just going to count the distance. What if I said segment TN? It's the exact same thing. Does it matter that I'm going backwards? Makes no difference in this case. Still five units, whatever those units are. Fill in what you need to fill in on this. I would highly suggest on this one, maybe make these bars. Computer won't let me make the bars any bigger. Maybe make them a little bigger.
This is the mathematical way to do this if you're on the number line. First thing, looking at these, what's these bars mean? Absolute value. What do you know when you take the absolute value of something? It's always got to be positive. It's like the distance, right? Absolute value is actually the distance that number is from zero on the number line. And it's always got to be positive. What's these little numbers here tell us, the two and the one? I couldn't hear you. There's two different ones, right? So if I just put this, I'm sure I have some smart aleck young person in this class. If I just put that and didn't put the two and the one in there, what would you tell me the answer was? Zero every time. So I put those in there so that you know you have one x, one number, one coordinate, and then some different coordinate. That's all they mean. Notice here that could be switched around. It makes no difference. So on this, is again, is the mathematical way to do it. x1 x sub 2, uh, these are called, those little twos and ones are called subscripts. And they just tell you that your two x's are different. They're subscripts and they just tell you that your x's are different. Two different coordinates, two different points. Give me a number for x1 here. What's x2 then? So on, so on, so on. Easiest way to find the distance from this point to that point is just do what? Just count. We could use either one of those two formulas and plug it into the absolute value and do all the math. Uh, what's the first x you want to pick? Four. Four minus, what's the second one then? Nine. What is four minus nine? Five. Negative five. What's the absolute value of negative five? Five. So how long is that second? Five. What if we turned it around and did nine minus four instead of four minus five, or four minus nine? Absolute value of 5, what's the absolute value of 5? Get the same answer whether you count, whether you do it, either one of those two points. Pretty easy. On a number line, you're just counting. Anything hard there, Silas? That's the easy stuff, right? Keep your notes out, open up your books to page 27. On page 27, there's a number line where it says example one. I want you to draw that number line on this number line. Fill in all the numbers, letters, and points, so on, so on. So take a second and do that right now. While you're doing it at your seats, I'm going to do it up here. In this first example, what do they want us to find? 
length of segment CF. Easiest way to find the length of segment CF is to do what? So let's do that. Write that answer down there on your notes. Just count. That's pretty easy. In the book, they're doing it out step by step for you. They're saying the absolute value, and they want you to fill in the stuff. It looks something like this, minus parentheses, and then that blank, another blank there. What's the coordinates of one of the points? Negative one. Negative one. So let's stick that in right there in your books, write this in. Negative one goes in that blank. What goes in the second blank then? Then they actually do all the steps just as one, right? They think they're smart enough to just do all this and just give the answer. What's negative one minus five? Negative six. And then what's the absolute value of negative six? Fill in that blank. Easy stuff. Problem down at the bottom that says check. Try that real quick. They give you the answers down there. I'm going to, as I'm looking at that, one of those answers just can't be the answer. Which one can't be the answer? Negative 12. Negative 12. How come? Because it's a negative. Distances can't be negative. So instead of having a 25% chance, if you just guess, you now have a 33% chance of getting it correct because you know that first one can't be right. What do they want us to find on this one? Segment AE. So from A to E. The length of segment AE. How would you find it? Count it. is it from A to E? 12. Anybody else get that? Could we have done it the mathematical way? What was point A? Negative 5 minus what was point E? What's a negative 5 minus 7? Negative 12. What's the absolute value of negative 12? Number line is pretty easy, right? Flip over to the next page. On the next page at the top, example two. Draw that on your third number line there. Draw that number line on that third number line. I think I gave you enough space, I'm not sure. But. What do they ask us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
negative 3. C is at negative 1. Zach, your paper ever look like this? Does your paper ever look like this? D is at 2. is at 3. So I don't have to feel bad because your paper sometimes looks like mine. And F is at 5. Why it's up. They ask us about what? congruent to each other. Remember, this is the congruent symbol. Equal sign with the little squiggle above it. For those two to be congruent to each other, what has to be true about their lengths? Have to be the same. How are we going to figure out the length of CB? How long is it? Two. And DF, how long is it? Three. Is that right? Are they the same? So can we just write this? That they're congruent? See if I know what to mean when you put a slash do something like that. It's not congruent. So you could write it that way. You could just write down not congruent. That would be fine with me. I don't care which way you do it. Real quickly, check down there on that page says check and it says determine whether segment AC is the same length as segment BD. Try that. Tell me here in a second what you get. Once she said it, so I just thought maybe she, once you hear Miranda say something, then she's always right, so that's the way it is. Find this! Draw in what you need to draw in on your paper there. Do what, Cooper? to harder stuff. You remember the distance formula? Good. And that should be easy. Especially you got that calculator laying there. Do all the work for you. Please make sure as you write this stuff down, you write it carefully so that you don't write something down wrong and use the formula incorrectly. With the distance formula, first thing, coordinate system. And we're going to go over this extremely quickly. On a coordinate system, this point right here in the middle is called the what? Origin. And what's the coordinates of that point? Zero, zero. Somewhere on your paper there, write this down. The first uh, number in an ordered pair is what? X. Second one is the Y. The X tells you what? Left or 
right? The Y tells you what? Up or down. And a lot of you are rolling your eyes. Oh, so we know all this. I know you know all this. I know you've been taught it many, many times, but I guarantee you, class this size, when we take our first test or quiz and it's got graphing on it, at least seven or eight of you in here are going to get your paper back and go, how did I miss that? And you're going to do it backwards. And Cooper's shaking his head, no, he'll probably be one of the seven or eight. Make up a point for me. Nine four. I guarantee that I'm going to have a lot of you. They're going to take this nine, and you're going to go up nine, and then to the right four. And that's not what it tells you to do. What's this tell you to do? Go to the right nine, and then up four. I'm not saying that you're stupid or anything. Just mess it up because you dealt with slope a lot last year, and slope goes backwards of our points. And you get in a rush, and you do it backwards. Another thing over here on my graph. What's wrong with my graph? It's small. It's not centered. There is nothing wrong with it not being centered. Please don't put zero zero in the middle every single time. Look at the numbers you need. Then decide where you want your x and your y axes at. All right? Because what's going to happen if you don't look at the numbers first, you start graphing and you end up way up here because you put your graph right in the middle and then you get confused. Put the x and the y wherever you want. A lot of problems that we do, the y axis is going to go right here. The x-axis is going to go right there because we're only going to deal with the positive stuff. Okay? So a lot of times it'll just be that positive stuff. Does anybody know which quadrant that is? Quadrant one. Quadrant one. So on your paper there, write that. Number one, quadrant one. What's true in the first quadrant? X is positive, Y is positive. This is quadrant two. X is negative. Y is positive. That's a positive. Can't hardly say it, sorry. Quadrant three. Negative and negative. Quadrant four. Positive. And a negative. It's hard to read. Again, what's these little subscripts tell us? Two different x's, two different y's. What's this number tell us? Is that a subscript? That tells us to square it. All right, so you've got to make sure you don't get the things confused. If I give you two points, made up two points there. First thing I do every single time, if I'm trying to find the distance between those two points, I do this. That's an X, that's a Y, that's an X, that's a Y. What two numbers go in these first two spots? What goes here? Negative two, that'll work. What goes here? Three. You gotta make sure, another common mistake when people start rushing. They put three here, and then guess what they put right here? The five, because they get in a rush. And they say, that goes there, that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. Got to make sure X's go here, Y's go there. Nothing hard about the distance formula. Calculator will do most of it for you. Again, make sure you got it calculated by next class. I know you don't have a whole lot of space there. Somewhere, find some space on your paper. Write this down, perfect square numbers. Perfect square number is a number. If you take the square root of it, 
it comes out even. It comes out as a whole number. So let's make a list of the perfect square numbers so you'll have them there on your paper. Give me a perfect square Sorry, number. Lowest one. If you're a bring your own laptop student, if you're a bring your own laptop student, please go to Mr. Pool's room, add this time. No. Thank you. That's something we could do during the intervention. Sorry, I said that out loud, didn't I? Give me the lowest perfect square number. Some lower. What's the square root of one? One. Give me the next one. Four. What's the square root of four? That means two times two, right? Next one. I apologize. If you are bring your own laptop and you cannot connect to the Wi-Fi, if you're bring your own laptop and you cannot connect to the Wi-Fi, please go to Mr. Pool's room at this time. Thank you. Next. Let's go. Nine, then what? Sixteen, then what? Twenty-five, then what? Thirty-six, then what? Forty-nine, then what? 64, then what? 81, 100, then what? 121, skip four. 144, then what? 169, grab your calculators if you got one laying there. This was, what was 144? 12 times 12, right? 169 was 13 times 13. 196 is 14 times 14. 25 is 15 times 15. What is it? 2. Sorry, I'm going to get rid of that. 256. 289. So what we have? 15, 16, 17, what's 18 times 18? 324, 19 times 19? 361, 20 times 20? 400. Does it stop there? No, but we're going to stop there. So if you're taking the square root of something, so if we're taking the square root of 121, it's going to come out exactly even at what? 11. These are numbers, these are nice. If we're doing distance formula and your answer underneath that square root, underneath that radical, comes out one of these numbers and it's going to come out nice and even. If not, then we're going to have to give the decimal answer or give the answer in some other form. And we're going to talk about that next. You don't have to get in your books. All you got to do is find this on your paper and you're going to graph these two points. Four, three, negative three, seven, and we're going to find the distance in between. As I'm doing this, I'm drawing my x and my y axis, and I'm just going to put it right in the middle. Look at your numbers. Where do I need the most space at? Negative. Negative seven, so negative going down, right? So maybe I do something like put my graph way up here, put my x axis way up there, Maybe put my y-axis, something like that. And I still don't have enough. That sucks. That's my y, that's my x. We'll work it out, though. How do I graph this first point? Tell me how to move. Over four. One, two, three, four. Is that right? What do you mean? Right, four. One, two, three, four. Then what? One, two, three. We'll call that point in. How do I graph this point? We'll call it point T. What do I do first? Left. Left. How many? One, two, three, and then what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
still on running out of space, just know that you're down below the graph. That's T down there. Does the graph in this case really make any difference? All it's going to make a difference is that we do the formula right. I'm going to write the formula out here. I highly suggest that until you get really, really good at doing the distance formula, you write the formula out each time. First thing I do every single time, I write this. Print C, print C, minus, squared, plus, print C, minus, print C, squared. I just write the formula out without any numbers or anything, no letters, no numbers in it. And then I'm just going to put in the, the correct things in those four positions. Four, is that an X or a Y? I put an X above that, Y above that, X above that, Y above that, just so I don't make any mistakes. What are my two X's? Or negative three. Before I go any farther, what ends up happening with this? You can just mark them out. Okay, a negative minus or minus a negative is just going to end up being positive. What's my Y's this time? Negative seven and three. Oh, hold on now, because we went four. Negative three, then we went negative seven, three. We did one one way and one the other. Does it matter? No, it makes no difference with the distance formula. With the slope formula that you did last year, it mattered. With this, it doesn't make any difference, so that's fine. If you have a calculator, all this stuff right here underneath there, you can type all of that into your calculator just like it is. I wouldn't type it in with the square root. If you can do it that way, that's fine. I'm not going to show you to do it that way because I'd rather you do it in two steps. I'd rather you find the answer to all of this then take the square root because some calculators are a little different and it gets confusing. I'm going to do it out step by step. 4 plus 3 I know is 7. Negative. 7 plus negative, or negative 7 and negative 3 is negative 10. 7 squared is 49. Negative 10 squared, that means negative 10 times negative 10, that's 100. I add those two together and I get 149. Is 149 one of those numbers that was on that list? Boy, that sucks in. Does everybody know what that symbol means? About, approximately. So we're going to round this off. Somebody help me out to ask the calculator so I don't have to grab mine. What's the square root of 149? 12.3, I think. 12.3? Yeah. And we'll go out one decimal place, most, one decimal place most of the time. So how far is it from N to T? About 12.3 units. If, again, on your, if you have a calculator, do all of this, just type all that in just like it is right there. Once you get that answer, which would be 149, then just take the square root of 149 and get that. I would not try to type in the square root and all that other stuff all at once. Do it in two steps. Otherwise, sometimes the calculator messes up and doesn't understand what you're wanting. Now, before we go any farther, other ways, and I'm hoping that algebra, some of your algebra teachers taught this, but a lot of times it gets skipped in algebra. If I get square root of 125, is that going to come out all nice and even? We could just give an approximate answer. If we want an exact answer, this is why I gave you all those perfect square numbers. What you do is you look at that list. And just like reducing a fraction, you reduce this. Watch closely so you understand this because a lot of problems are going to give you the answer 
but they're going to give it to you in this reduced form. What's a perfect square number on your list that will divide evenly into 125? Evenly. 25. 25 will, right? How many quarters are there in a dollar 25? So all you do is you split this apart into two separate square roots. Square root of 25 times the square root of 5. What is the square root of 25? That comes out from underneath the radical, underneath, out from underneath the square root. This stays underneath the square root because we can't do anything with it. 5 times the square root of 5. We said 12.3 when we rounded off our answer. These two answers, no, that's not right. Sorry. This answer and the decimal answer, we would have found it. I was thinking we did that same problem, but we didn't. This answer and the decimal answer, same answer, just in two different forms. This is an exact form. The other form would be a rounded off form. Don't make these harder than they are. Does everybody, did everybody see this last year now? Did you do stuff like that? Maybe. Page 29. Look at page 29. Right here on this graph, we're going to do this problem. The check down to the bottom. What are the two points they give us on the 29? What is it? 5, 9. Negative 6, what? Negative 4. Is that what you said? It's hard to hear up here. Do we really need to graph it? You can if you want. All right? Again, this is a graph that I pulled offline. Got a dot right in the middle. Is that where I want you to draw your x and y at? No. So ignore that. I just couldn't find a better graph. All right, just ignore that. We don't even need the graph. This is an X, that's a Y, that's an X, that's a Y. What am I going to put in these first two spots? Negative six and five. How about the second two? Negative four and nine. Now, I'm hoping that some of you catch on after a while. If you have a negative number as your x or a y, where's the easiest place to put it? The second one. So if I switch these around and it said 5 minus a negative 6, and I switch these two around and it said 9 minus a negative 4, what's going to happen there? Change the plus. You could type all that right into your calculator, then take the square root of it. I'm going to do it out longhand. Ignore that stray mark going up through there. That's 11 squared plus uh, 13 squared. 121 plus, uh, what is that, 169, is that right? Square root, that's 290, is that correct? What do we do with that? Take square root. Somebody help me out because I don't have my guy for that. 17.1. Everybody agree with 17.1? Now, when you get stuff like this, sometimes they won't even throw a fit if you just leave it like that. Square root of 290. That's an exact answer. Maybe you don't reduce it down because it's you don't know what it will divide evenly into. It. All right? So... Either of those answers will work. Now, the bad thing with leaving it as a square root, if you leave this as a square root, square root of 100, then I'm taking points off. Because what is the square root of 100? 10. That comes out even. You should be able to do that. Something like this one is not going to come out even. I wouldn't throw a fit if you left it this way, if you wrote it this way, or if you figured out there's some perfect square number that will go into it and you reduced it down. on the
notes somewhere? It's not on your notes. Maddie and Julia are hiking at their local state park. Both girls start uh, their hikes at the main shelter, but go on different trails. After three hours, Maddie is five miles north, three miles east of the shelter. Julia is seven miles east and two miles north of the shelter. How far apart are the two girls? I'll tell you what. Yeah. Doesn't matter. You can do this right on that other graph because we're probably going to run out of time anyway. So you can mark out the word problem there on that last page and just know it's Maddie and Julia's problem. How am I going to do this on this graph? They didn't give me any points. We're going to make it. What are we going to put where? First, we need a what? Starting point, right? Where are we going to put that? Probably at the origin, right? A lot of times, you'll make the origin right here. Oops, I'll do that. You'll make the origin right here, because we'll want everything positive. The bad thing here is they go, let's see how the girls go. So one of them goes uh, five miles north. That's all right, because that's positive, right? Three miles east. Is that positive or negative? Positive. So that works. Julia goes seven miles east, that's positive, and two miles north, that's positive. Do we need any negatives here? No. So could we make this, if I could hit the line right there, make that our Y, and this bottom one down here, our X? Yeah. yeah. And where are we going to put the shelter? Right there. Right there in the corner. My pen would draw, which it won't. Putting the shelter right there. Shelter. Now, how are we going to see where Maddie's at? What did Maddie do? knows what Maddie did. So what's that tell me to do from the shelter? One, two, three, four, five. So she got to here. Went five miles north, then what she did? Three miles east. Put her right there. That's Maddie. How about for Julia? Seven miles east. So what's that tell me to do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then what? Up two. Up two. That's Julia. What are we going to do here? How are we going to find the distance in between? Use, Use the formula. But we need the coordinates first, right? What was Maddie's coordinates? Be careful. Three, five. Three, five. What's Julia's coordinates? Seven, two. Seven, two. Now we're going to set up the distance formula. What's my axis this time? Three and seven. So seven minus three. What's my y coordinates? Five and two. You might punch all that in for us and tell me what that comes out before you take the square root. Anybody else get 25? Yes, no, maybe? What's the square root of 25? It comes out even, doesn't it? So I don't need it properly. How far apart are they? Five miles. So 
a lot of time setting up using real world stuff, just setting it up on the on the grid. That's your assignment. Do me a favor and grab a paper towel. I'll come around and spray your desk off or spray your desk here in a second. Get a calculator by next time. They will be graded next class. Right on this problem, it says Chelsea and Amy are sitting in separate cars on the Monogalia incline, whatever that is. Chelsea is traveling up Mount Washington and Amy is traveling down. When the two girls notice each other, Chelsea is a horizontal distance of 212 feet from the lower station and is at a height of 151.6 feet. Amy it has a horizontal distance of 435 feet from the lower station and a height of 311 feet. What is the distance between the two girls? First thing I'm going to do here, we're going to give first, this is what it looks like if I can get this to work. Probably not. So they're passing each other in these cars is what they're doing. One's going up the hill, one's going down the hill. We're trying to see, for some reason, they didn't notice each other when they were right here and it'd be easy and they were zero feet apart. They noticed each other away, one was way up and the other was way down. We're going to graph this in a second. But for now, we're going to try to figure out the coordinates of the two girls. So let's do Chelsea. We'll call her point C. Uh, said she had a horizontal distance. Well, horizontal is going across. So that's going to be our X of 212 feet or 212.0 per uh, from the lower station. Her height, that's her vertical distance, or that's the Y coordinate is uh, 151.6 feet. So that's Chelsea's ordered pair. Then we got Amy's ordered pair. It says Amy has a horizontal distance, so that's her X, of 435.3. 435.3 feet and a height, her vertical distance, of 311, ignore that, 311.3 feet. So those are the ordered pairs for the two girls. 212.0, 151.6 for Chelsea, and Amy, 435.3, Three hundred and eleven point three. I'm going to go to this next slide so I can have a graph. We have this graph. Again, on this graph, it's got this dot in the middle here. Ignore it. We don't care about it. We can make it wherever we want. All these distances for these uh, for these two girls are positive, so. We're going to make our y-axis right here and our x-axis, if I can ever draw it, now I'm going to go up one, our x-axis right there. The only reason I'm going up one is because my graph won't let me draw it, or my PowerPoint won't let me draw it there. Now when we do this, we have these ordered pairs, 212.0, 151.6, that was Chelsea. And Amy was 435.3 and 311.3. So we're not going to fit on our graph here, we're not going to fit 212 or 151, none of those on here. So what I might do is go by 
maybe, let's see, we need 435 over and 300 and some up. So I might go by 50s. Or maybe go by 25s and just count every other block. So maybe go 25, 50 there. So this person, this block right, or that, that one right there is 50, 100. Or that this is 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, and maybe do the same thing going up the side over here. That's 25, 50s right there, 100. 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, and 450, so on, so on. Then you can graph it. Chelsea was 212.0 and 151.6. So we go out to 212, which is going to be somewhere about here, and up 151.6, which is going to be somewhere about in here. So that's Chelsea. Amy was 435. She went out another one here. That's 450 out there. So she's going to be 435. That's out here somewhere. And up 311. Going up this way, 311 would be somewhere about in there. That's Amy. Do we care that these points are exactly where they're supposed to be? It really makes no difference. All we're trying to do is find this distance. And the way we're going to find that distance is by using the distance formula. So I draw or write out my distance formula here. This is one. If you don't have a calculator, you're probably not going to be able to do it. And remember these first two are X's, these second two are Y's. That's an X. That's an X down there. That's a Y. I can draw a Y. That's a Y. So I want my X's. I'm going to put 435 pins a little off, 435.3 minus 212, and then 311.3 minus 151.6. If you don't have a calculator, you're probably not going to be able to do this. So if I'm doing this on my calculator, again, if you're doing this on a, one of the uh, TI-30X2Ss that I told you would probably be the best to get, you could type all of that right in, and that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to type it all in just like it is right there. Parentheses, 435.3 minus 212. Point zero, close the parentheses, square that, plus 311.3. Oh, shoot, I forgot. So I got to go back. I forgot on my calculator. I need another parenthesis, then 311.3 minus 151.6. Close the parentheses, square that, hit equals. And I get this number, 7, 5, 3, 6, 6 point nine, eight. So some great big huge number. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit second square root, and I'm going to type in that number, 7, 5, 3, 6, 6 point nine, eight. Hit equals, and it tells me that my distance ends up being 
274.5. If I look back at the problem, the units were in feet. So that means the girls, when they saw each other, were 200 or about 274.5 feet apart. Again, notice our graph doesn't have to be perfect. It's just giving us an idea. It doesn't have to be exact, and we don't have to always go by ones or twos or whatever. We can go by 25s, whatever, so that we can fit it on the graph. And we don't always have to start with our X and Y right in the middle. We start with our X and Y down here because we wanted everything all positive numbers. That's your assignment, should be on your notes there.